Now, stronger than diamond, more conductive than copper, and more flexible than rubber. A miracle material that might once have been designed to uh, science fiction is fast becoming science fact. Composed of a single layer of carbon atoms extracted from graphite, its potential is overwhelming. From paper-thick electronic screens to aiding drug delivery, there seems to be very little that graphene can't do. Well, the British government seems to think this, allocating over $90 million for research. But can graphene possibly live up to the hype? Well, the BBC's David Shookman has more. The glittering prospect of a strange new substance that could lead to a new industrial revolution. The tiny black specks on this tape are the extraordinary material known as graphene. Manchester University in Britain has pioneered graphene, earning two of the scientists here Nobel Prizes. It's like early days of discovery of atom or something like that. It's really so surprisingly rich. And this is because we get this new world of materials which we were not aware before. To understand graphene, you need to see the world through new eyes. Not the normal three dimensions we're used to, height, width and length. Imagine instead just one layer of atoms with only two dimensions. That's graphene. Graphene is so minute you need a microscope like this one, one of the most powerful in the world to get a sight of it. Here it is, a single layer of atoms, the thinnest material ever created, so thin it's basically only got two dimensions. Now, let's use virtual reality to get a closer look at this stuff because it's got extraordinary properties. If you stretch graphene, it turns out to be stronger than steel or even diamond down at the same scale, useful for making all kinds of things more robust. It conducts electricity far more effectively than copper, vital for future electronics. It's also amazingly flexible. You can bend it any way you want. You could have a computer screen that you could fold up like paper. No wonder people are talking of graphene as a material that could revolutionize the way we make things. This promotional video from Samsung shows one view of the kind of gadgets that could emerge with graphene. Paper thin, flexible, 3D. But it could also be used for new batteries or medical devices. That's why there's a global race to exploit graphene. Singapore, with this huge laboratory, is part of a surge of interest. The scale of worldwide investment is massive. It's extremely competitive. Asia, especially Singapore, started early. Still, we have to see what's going to happen. There are lots of things going on, so it's going to take a little bit of time to find out who's going to win the race. A key measure of who's winning that race is revealed by the patents filed for different aspects of graphene. China has more than 2,000. Samsung has more than 400, the most of any company. And Britain, which led the field nearly a decade ago, has just 42. I think there's incredible interest around the world. And from 2007 onwards, we see a massive spike in patent filings in countries all over the world, um, particularly in uh, the USA, um, Asia and Europe. They're almost too small to see, but these tiny fragments of graphene are at the heart of one of the biggest scientific contests of recent times, with a great deal at stake. David Shookman, BBC News, in Manchester. Well, John Leto is president of Vorbeck Materials, uh, one of the first companies to launch a graphene-based product. And he joins us now from Washington. Welcome to you. And also joined in the studio by uh, the BBC Science editor, David Shookman, whose report we've just uh, seen. John Leto, let me come to you first of all. What are you making with it? Yes, well, we're making a variety of products. And the first thing that we're making are incredibly thin, flexible, printed electronics. Electronics that can be printed much like newspapers. So I have in my hands here a roll of material that's been printed with our graphene inks. And this is a circuit that you can crush, you can fold, you can put through the washing machine, you can even put it through a closed dryer, and it maintains its conductive properties. Wow, that, now that, okay, that's very convincing. But what is the market application for that? Why would people who may need that material be buying your stuff rather than something else? 
Sure. Well, I think the, the key really is in the robustness of the material as well as its high performance. So graphene has a unique combination of both very high electrical performance and the robustness that you need to go into unique applications. So when we look at the market for this material, it's in wearable electronics, electronics that you can embed in your clothing seamlessly so you don't even know it's there. Military electronics, robustness is very important. And also in aerospace and marine applications. Since graphene is non-metallic, it doesn't corrode. And that's a huge application in a, or a huge advantage in electronics. And, and John, are you at the theoretical stage on this? I, you know, this is the potential for it. Or are those products, are you selling stuff to the US military? Are you selling clothes with electronics in them? Yes. Uh, yes, in fact, we are. Um, and uh, we've moved uh, well beyond the theoretical stage. Um, we originally got our technology from Princeton University back in 2005. And the Ilhan Oxi labs at Princeton have been really instrumental in developing this technology. We've had the ability to produce graphene on the ton scale since 2007. And the applications first reached the market in late 2010, 2011. So we actually have some applications now that are selling in retail stores. There's a line of anti-theft packaging. So packaging with sensors in it, embedded uh, hidden in the cardboard itself that detects when the item is trying to be stolen that's being commercialized through the company Mead West Vaco right now in retail stores. Fascinating. And let me bring in David, our, our science editor. I mean, it does seem that the, the potential, you know, in a vast, I mean, we saw your report kind of, you know, it's not just limited to one little thing. It seems to be extraordinary to scope. I think it is extraordinary. You've not only got potential applications now and in the next few years, principally in the electronics field that we've heard quite a bit about and you saw that promotional video from Samsung but there are also potential applications further down the track and very interestingly there was a major study into the potential of graphene by a number of specialists from Manchester University including one of the two Nobel Prize winners who said that probably if graphene's cost can come down it may in the coming decade or two start to replace established materials like silicon but that the real excitement about graphene is when people actually invent new uses for it. An extraordinary sense of a parallel might be when the mobile phone came into use. No one, the manufacturers hadn't really expected texting to be a big deal, but it became a very big deal. When the internet got going, no one really imagined Facebook, but now that's a big deal. So I think that's really where the excitement lies. Okay, well let me just go back to J John. I, I mean, do, do you sense that excitement? Oh, absolutely. And uh, really, the fields that we're operating in have exploded uh, from electronics to composite materials, making very high-strength plastics and uh, structural materials with it, um, all the way to new battery technologies, flexible, lightweight, washable, high-energy storage capacity batteries. And, how, and are, is the cost of graphene coming down or is it actually rising as people see more and more applications for it and demand goes up? You know, well, uh, the price of graphene on the market is very competitive because it is such a high performance material. It doesn't take much of it uh, to create some of these applications. And so really the cost that the manufacturer sees or that the consumer will see is lower than the existing technology. And that's one of the really, even right now, it's lower than the existing technology. And that's one of the really exciting parts about graphene. Okay, John Leto, grateful to you there in Washington, and David in the studio. Thanks very much, uh, all, both of you. Fascinating stuff there. Uh, just to say that you can find out more on graphene at our website, bbc.com slash news.